Welcome to another Fast Tech video. Before we start, please go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That costs you nothing and it helps us out a lot. So please go ahead and do that before we start this video. In this video, we're going to be disassembling a PlayStation 1, or as it was known, a PlayStation and we're going to be disassembling it down to the motherboard. We're going to be doing a full restore on this device. And I'm going to be showing you guys how to fix this PS1 if it breaks and how to replace each component when it fails. And be sure to check us out at FastTechStore.com if you need any PlayStation parts. To get started, you can check the model number of your PlayStation at the back of the console. And it should start with SCPH. This one is an SCPH 9001. The last number could be different based on your country. One is usually for US and Canadian consoles. If you're in Europe or Asia, you could have a 9000, 9002, 9003, etc. The most important thing to look out for are the first three numbers. This one was manufactured in November 1999. So the first thing I'm going to be showing you guys how to fix, which is the easiest thing to fix on the system, is the laser lens and lots of times the laser lens stops reading your discs this is a very common problem in playstation one systems so without even disassembling it what you can do is get some isopropyl alcohol that you can get from fasttechstore.com so what you want to do is get some q-tips you can get these at any drug store or convenience store isopropyl alcohol and then what you want to do is you want to spray some of this alcohol onto the head of the laser and you use the q-tip to clean the laser lens in a circular motion you don't go like this or like this you go in a circle Lots of times that is gonna fix your problem. You'll notice that the laser lens moves around a little bit and that's completely normal. So once you have the laser lens clean, try running your game. And if it's still not loading, you probably need to replace the laser deck or sometimes it could be the motor. Sometimes the motor gets dirty as well and you have to lubricate it or clean it out. I'll show you guys how to do that, but for that we have to take the system apart. The next thing I'm going to be showing you guys how to fix is if your PlayStation is not turning on at all. So let's just say you plug the power cable in at the back and you press the power button, but nothing happens. There's no beep, no light indicator at the front. This is caused by a dead power supply. And the power supply is located inside the system, so we have to take it apart to replace that piece. So we're going to remove the cable. We're going to flip the console over. There's some screws on the bottom that have to be removed. These are Phillips screws, and we're gonna need our Fast Tech Pro Auto Kit. This kit is gonna save you a lot of time for your electronics disassemblies. You could just use a regular Phillips screwdriver, and most people have these screwdrivers at home. But I guarantee that you guys will not regret buying this kit because this will save you a lot of time as I would demonstrate now. This is how long it takes to get a screw out with a Fast Tech Pro Auto Kit. But if I use a manual screwdriver, this is how long it takes. So if you add all the screws that we're gonna be removing, that's gonna save you a lot of time and time is money. So check the links in the description box and the top comment, and you can use the coupon code YouTube for a discount. Once you have the screws out, there's six of them. We're gonna flip the console over and this top piece should just come off like that. Easy. And that's the cover that holds the power button, the eject or open button in this case, which opens up the disc tray. 
and the reset button. As you can see, it's kind of dusty in here, which is understandable for a system that's older than most of you watching this video. So the next thing I'm gonna be showing you guys how to replace is the power supply. As I mentioned earlier, if your system's not turning on, it's this component right here. That's most likely the culprit of the issue. Now, if you recently plugged your system in, you wanna be very careful touching any of these components because these components do hold a charge even after the power supply is disconnected. As you can see, this is where the power cable goes in and this is the unit that supplies clean power to the motherboard. So to remove the power supply and fix the no power issue, there's a couple of screws here that we're gonna have to remove. Also Phillips screws. Once we have those screws out, we're gonna remove this power supply connector. There's two parts to this connector, okay? One side is in the power supply and there's another side that's just a wire. So we're gonna grab the wire side of the connector and we're gonna lift up the connector like that. Easy. Now the power supply is gonna be removed by simply lifting it up. And that's the power supply unit. And as I mentioned earlier, if you have a failed power supply, you need to replace it. If you have no power, the PlayStation is not turning on at all. No beep, no light at the front. That means you need to replace this component. And this is the power supply right here. As far as I know, this is the only indication of a model number on this power supply. But these power supplies work from SCPH 5000 to 9000 series systems. It will not work on newer PS1 systems. So you gotta check your model number before you order one of these at fasttechstore.com. If you do order one by mistake and it's not the right one, don't worry, we'll, you can send it back and we'll send you another. And we do sell these on our website, as I mentioned earlier. But before you order a power supply, there is a way to fix these if this fuse is broken. So if you have a power supply where the connection, as you can see on this power supply, there's a little fuse here and you won't see these in the newer power supplies. And if you see this bridge inside, and if this is broken, kind of like the filament of a bulb, if this is broken, then you can just replace this fuse. And in 99% of the cases that fixes the problem. But if you have a dead power supply and this fuse looks okay, like this one looks fine, then you need to replace the power supply. Then, then some of these other components that could be busted. If you've replaced your blown fuse already and the new replacement fuse, which also we sell, blows again, that could indicate some kind of a power issue in the power supply. So you might wanna check some of these other components on the power supply unit. But if this fuse is broken visibly and you can see it or it looks burnt, you can simply get this fuse out using a flathead from our Fast Tech Pro Toolkit, not the Auto Kit. And you just lift up the fuse like that. Get it out of its cradle. And replace it with a new fuse. We also sell these fuses on our website as well at FastTechStore.com. But as you can see, that this one looks fine. The wire running in between these two points looks intact. So there's nothing wrong with that fuse. So to put it back in, you simply push it back in place like that. Super easy. These are found in old Sony electronics from the late 90s to the early 2000s. I remember the, one of the first CRT TVs our family ever owned, it had a big UK plug on it with one of these fuses inside. And a lot of the Sony devices, even on the inside, had these fuses. And if something blew, you could easily open up the device and replace the fuse, fix it yourself. But it seems like that DIY culture that we used to have in the late 90s and early 2000s, that seems to be going away. So much so to a point where manufacturers won't even sell you certain components because they don't want you to fix these devices yourself. What a far cry from where we were back then. But anyways, I digress, let's move on. 
Next thing I'm gonna show you guys how to remove is also a very common point of failure in these PlayStation 1 systems. It's the laser lens. And there's a motor and lens assembly that we can remove. There's a ribbon cable here that we can simply lift out like that. There's a power cable for the disc drive that's here. Now there's a connector part that's attached to the motherboard here, as you can see. And then there's the cable. And a lot of people, when they try to pull the cable out, they pull the connector out as well. So you can go about this a few ways. You can try to grab only the cable part of the connector, wiggle and pull, which you can do, which is I'm gonna demonstrate. This is the proper way to do it. But another way to do it is grab all of the cables at the same time. Don't just grab one wire like that, then you're gonna pull that particular wire out. If you grab all of them, the force gets distributed and you can safely pull out the cable. Watch, wiggle slowly, pull. And I only show you this way because a lot of you are not gonna be able to pull it out this way and you'll just rip out that connector. So if you're having a hard time, just grab all the cables, wiggle slowly, slowly and pull. Now we're gonna be able to lift up the laser lens assembly. And this is what it looks like up close. This is a model KSM 440 AEM. And you can also buy this surprise, surprise at fasttechstore.com. And this is a very common point of failure. As I mentioned earlier, these first gen PlayStation ones were notorious for having bad lasers and you have to be replaced quite frequently. If you need one of these, we do sell them on our website. Check out the links in the description box and the top comment. This is the component that's responsible for reading your discs. So if your game discs are not loading anymore and you're stuck on that Sony screen or you're stuck on a particular part of a game but that game disc works fine on other consoles, you need to replace this component. Lots of times, cleaning the laser as I showed you earlier in the video fixes the problem. And other times you gotta lubricate the motor or clean out the motor, that sometimes also helps. But if all else fails, you need to replace this component. Now I'm gonna get the power supply cable out of the way. There's like a little connector here that you can pinch and lift up like this. It's like a little plastic piece, comes out easy. You can just go ahead and get this cable out of the way. Now I'm gonna remove the memory card and the controller ports. There's a ribbon cable that runs here to the board. We can lift it up by grabbing the cable from here and just pulling it up like that. There's two Phillips screws here and here that have to be removed. two Phillips screws that hold it in. And now we can just lift out this component. This is the component obviously that your controllers connect to and your memory cards go into. So if you're having an issue with those, you can replace this component, but these hardly ever break from what I understand. There's not much to them. And to any of the Gen Z kids who are watching this, but believe it or not, before USB, we, we had these 256 kilobyte memory cards for the PlayStation 1 and then 8 MB memory cards for the PS2 to have save games for our video games. Otherwise, you couldn't save the game, you had to start over. And because in my early PS2 days, that was the first console our family ever owned, we didn't have a memory card for the longest time. And because we didn't have that card that goes in here, I'd have to restart GTA San Andreas from the first mission every time I played it the good old days. Now there's some screws here that we need to remove to get to the motherboard, which is the main component of the PlayStation.
once that last screw is out, we're gonna lift up this piece, get that out of the way. I'm gonna get this piece and get this out of the way as well. And now we have access to the motherboard. And of course, there's a mod chip installed on this PS1. These mod chips were extremely common back in the day. And every single PS1 or PS2 had a mod chip in it, almost every single one. And this one is no different. This is the first time I'm actually looking at a PS1 motherboard. I've never disassembled one of these systems before. These were a little bit before my time. Even though I was alive in the late 90s, our family did not own any kind of game consoles. And I think that was by design. I did not even know the PlayStation was a thing. Up until 2003, I hadn't even seen one of these. And it was the PS1 system that I saw, which was the newer revision of this. Anyways, we're gonna move on. There's a couple of screws here that we're gonna remove. It's two Phillips screws. And these are all the same size screws, so you don't have to worry about mixing them up. Now we're gonna very carefully get the motherboard out. Try not touching any of the components on the board because you could cause a short. So that's a closer look at the motherboard. This is the part number of this PlayStation 1 motherboard. It's a one. 674987-31 and you can find these motherboards without the mod chip because that would be illegal and we definitely don't sell mod chips so you can buy one of these motherboards without the mod chip at fasttechstore.com or fasttech.ca and you can use the coupon code youtube for a discount as always these are the ports at the back as i mentioned you want to be very very careful with this component this is the main component of the system so handle it with care. Now we're gonna be lifting this piece out of the bottom and we're gonna be giving the case a complete clean because we want this thing to be as close to when it left the factory as possible. So we're gonna give all the components a good clean and then I'm gonna show you guys how to reassemble this thing back to its old glory. All right, for the cleaning of the plastic components, we're gonna use some water and some dish soap. And you could use water and dish soap on plastic components, it's no problem at all. As long as you dry everything once you're done. Use a brush to clean the case of the PlayStation. And I took extra care not to scrub that sticker off at the back as it has serial number and model number information on it. The more elbow grease you put in this step, the better. As you're gonna see, at the end of this video, the results speak for themselves. I brushed every single corner of the case on the system, paying special attention to the vents. Then I cleaned out the disc tray and the power and reset buttons. Once I was satisfied with my cleaning job and realized I couldn't clean it any further, I rinsed the case with water, let it dry for a bit, and then wiped it down with paper towels. Then after drying it with paper towels, I let it sit for another two hours to dry. I cannot emphasize how important it is to make sure all of that liquid is removed from your PlayStation, but I thought it was worth mentioning. Then I used some isopropyl alcohol to get some of the marks and stains that I couldn't get off with a soap and water solution, but you wanna be very careful and very conservative when using isopropyl alcohol on a plastic surface because using too much can damage the look and the finish. Now let's move on to some of the more sensitive components on the system. The metal piece, you can also use soap and water to clean this out, but make sure that you get any kind of moisture out of there. But this one is not as dirty as it could have been. So we're just gonna use some rubbing alcohol, spray it on there. Again, we sell the isopropyl alcohol on our website, fasttechstore.com.
Now, one of the only components I would recommend that you leave alone when it comes to cleaning, especially when it looks like this, it doesn't look that bad. It doesn't look bad at all, to be honest. There's no dust on it. It's a little bit specks, little dust bunnies that are removed already when I opened it. This is a component that you generally want to leave alone. As you can see, even though I'm very experienced with this kind of thing, I'm still holding the board from the sides, even though I have an anti-static mat underneath me because you short this thing and then you're gonna need no board, which is basically a new system. So unless your motherboard is really, really disgusting, you don't have to clean it. You know, if it's really, really dirty and it's got some liquid on it or something, then I would recommend cleaning it because then you could have a problem if you don't clean. But in this case, we're not going to touch the board because it's fine. There's, there's no need for it to be clean. As they say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But if you do have to, you can use rubbing alcohol to gently clean the board with Q-tips. And I would recommend che checking for residue in each area and each component that you clean. But we have cleaned all the other components. The power supply, however, looks like it could use some love. I clean the power supply the same way I would clean a motherboard using some alcohol and Q-tips and always checking for residue after cleaning. You want to be very careful working on power supplies and or cleaning them because some of these components on the power supply can hold a charge even hours after the system's been unplugged. Once again, I will repeat that this is one of those components you want to make sure is bone dry before you plug your system back in because any liquid left on the power supply would result in an immediate short and even catastrophic failure in some cases. As for the memory card readers and the controller ports, you could use some rubbing alcohol on the outside because rubbing alcohol evaporates very, very quickly. You get some rubbing alcohol, you get a Q-tip, oh, that's just a screw that fell out. You wipe the surface of the memory card slots, wipe it down, you can see, and you can see there's dirt coming off of it, so there is gunk and stuff on the surface of it will cause discoloration. So yeah, just go over it with Q-tip and alcohol only on this component. No water, never any water on these components. I mean, you technically could, but you know, it's not the water that kills electronics. It's turning on after water's on them that kills them. So you gotta get the liquid out. And like I said, with isopropyl alcohol, this stuff evaporates very, very quickly. So it's not gonna cause a short. Let's get in there, give it some tough love. As you can see, the left one looks much cleaner than the right one. So we're gonna spray a little bit more and let it sit for a couple of seconds. Now that I've let it sit, I'm gonna grab Q, two Q-tips and like really get in there. Use extra pressure, force, not too much. You don't wanna break the spring door. Like really get in there, man. Now for the laser lens, I already showed you guys in the beginning of the video how to clean the head with a Q-tip. And what you do is you get some alcohol on the lens. I'll do it one more time for the people who skipped the first half of the video. You put some alcohol on it and you go in a circular motion. Not like this, not like this either. You go like this in a circular motion. Get the laser lens cleaned. Once that's done, you get some alcohol on the sides. Tip it down with a Q-tip. As you can see, but just by looking at it, you might not think that it was that dirty. It's black plastic and Dust does not show that well on black plastic, but it's there. If this was white plastic, this would be brown by now. The only component I wasn't fully satisfied with in terms of how clean it looks 
is this part right here. So I decided to clean it with soap and water just like I did with the case since cleaning it with isopropyl alcohol didn't really do the trick. So off it goes for a bath. Same thing that I did with the case. Warm soapy water and a brush. Cleaning this piece as much as I possibly could. There were some small spots that were still left over but I suspect that's either heat damage or corrosion. And it goes without saying that I made sure that this piece was extra dry before I put it back in the system because this is a component that directly touches the motherboard. This is as good as I was able to get it. Won't get any cleaner than this. I suspect some of this is just corrosion and some of these are heat burns, which I don't know if it's a heat burn because PS1s don't run that hot. As you guys noticed, there was no fan in the system. The entire system is passively cooled. So I would imagine it's just some kind of corrosion or discoloring on the metal, but no one's gonna look at this anyways. Still an improvement from where it was before. Now we're gonna start reassembling the device. This piece goes on first. Now we're gonna get the motherboard. And there's a mod chip on this. I'm gonna leave that in there. If you wanna remove the mod chip at this point, if you had one, if you wanna remove any mod chip that you had at this point, all you would have to do is get a soldering iron, like a Hackle FX951, which is what we recommend and use. Links in the description box if you need one. All you'd have to do is remove these wires, pull out the chip, but we're gonna leave it in there. I'm gonna place the motherboard down like that. You'll notice the spot where the ports sit. So now we're gonna install this piece on like this. We're gonna install these two Phillips screws. One of them goes in here. And the other one goes in here. The spots where they go are marked with arrows. They're marked with arrows and that's one of the good things about Sony components is they have arrows on where the screws go. Even to this day. Now we're going to install this piece on and it goes on here. There's a couple of Phillips screws that hold that on and again there's arrows to indicate where the screws go. Looks like I'm running low on charge on my FastTech Pro Auto Kit, but one of the good things, one of the great things about this kit is that it's fully rechargeable. So I can plug it in and it's gonna recharge as I'm working. Other screw goes in here. One of them goes in here. Again, another arrow to show you where it goes. Another one goes in here. Now we're gonna install the memory card and the controller ports. I'm gonna sit it down like this. There's the cable, this ribbon cable that needs to be connected. And line up the connectors, just push it down. And the two Phillips screws, one of them goes in here and the other one goes in here. At this point, we're gonna reinstall the screws for the memory card adapter and the controller ports. 
What's great about disassembling a PlayStation or some of the older systems like a Nintendo NES is the fact that all the screws are the same size. Now, we're gonna install the laser lens assembly. There's these three mounting points that it goes on. And they're here on the laser assembly. We're gonna line it up. We're gonna line up the points. Here, another one here on this side like that. And then there's another one on this side that's gonna automatically line up. This one, I believe goes under the disc drive. So does this one. And then we're gonna plug the cable in here and just push it, push it down like that. It's gonna click in place. And now we're gonna connect the power for the laser assembly. I wouldn't call this a disc drive. I wouldn't call this a disc drive. It's just a laser assembly with a motor. It doesn't have an accepting mechanism. So we're not gonna give it that kind of credit. Now I'm gonna put the power supply in its place. There's clips on the side that hold it in and the screws as well, these screws. There's a lot of common screws in this thing. Actually, all the assembly screws are the same. The only screws that are different are the case screws and the power supply screws, which makes reassembly a lot easier. One of the screws goes in here. And the other one goes in here. And these power supplies are voltage specific. As it says right here, this is 125 volts. Well, the, where the PlayStation 4s and PlayStation 5s are today, you can do 110 and 220. These power supplies did either 120 or 220. You didn't have systems that could do both, but now the newer systems, they do 110 and 220. So make sure that you check your voltage on the power supply before you order a component from fasttechstore.com. We're gonna line up this cable like this only goes in one way. I line up the cable like that and then push it down. And the other side of this cable goes in the power supply. I'm gonna line up the cable like that. Check the color where the wires are, if you're not sure. So the brown and red cable is supposed to be this way. Push it down. There's this little pinch connector that holds these cables in place. The clicking mechanism goes in here and the cable, this cable is supposed to go underneath here and this cable is supposed to go underneath here. We're going to make sure that that stays that way. And now I'm gonna reinstall the last piece, which is the case. We're gonna line it up from the front and the back, rotate the console, and then we're gonna install these Phillips screws the last screws that remain. And done. As you can see, there's a huge difference on where the console was before we started this restoration process and where it is now. There's some surface level scratches. We can't do anything about that, but much, much better from where it was before. Now I'm gonna plug it in to make sure that it powers on. I do not have any PlayStation 1 game discs, so I can't test the disc drive, even though that is the thing 
that is most commonly broken on these. This was a system that I had purchased a few years ago and it just sat in my storage and we didn't do anything with it because there's, as you know, there's not much demand for these anymore. But I'm glad I was able to bring this little thing back to life. As you can see, the power lights on. You can't hear any fan kicking because these systems, believe it or not, had no fan. As you saw in this video, these systems were passively cooled without any kind of a heat sink even or some kind of a big component to cool the system. The frame of the system, this component and this component helps with the cooling, but that's about it. So that looks like a successful restore job from Fast Tech. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. These videos take a lot of time and effort to make. And don't forget to check out our Fast Tech Pro Auto Kit. I guarantee you this toolkit is going to save you a lot of time with your electronics repairs. Not just your PlayStation 1, but your PS3, your PS4, your PS5, your Xbox, your Nintendo Wii, Apple iPhone, Apple MacBook, PC, you name it. Links are in the description box as always. And you can use the coupon code YouTube for a discount. And don't forget that we sell all PS1, PS4, and PS5 components at fasttechstore.com or fasttech.ca. And I'll include links in the description box for all PlayStation 1 parts. Thanks for watching another Fast Tech video. Before you leave, make sure to subscribe to the channel and smash that like button. That helps us out more than you know. This is Shiroz from Fast Tech signing out, and I'll see you in the next one.